Jenna and Ron here for this week's edition of Ask Ron. Okay, so the first question is from Trina in Greenwood, Mississippi. Hey, Trina. Where should I start if I don't have any money to pay someone for contacting FISBOs mm -hmm. and calling them? Initially, I would have to do everything myself. I have looked for work but have not been able to get a job to generate income to invest in real estate. What would be a good plan for me to get my first deal set, step by step? I'm going through as much information on your site as I can and would mm -hmm. like to have some guidance on what I should do. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to level with you, Trina. First of all, you're not going to solve all your money problems by doing a real estate deal, especially if you've had no training doing it. So you need to continue looking for a job, looking for some kind of way to sustain life while you're learning the ropes. I recommend no one ever go quit their job until they've already done a few deals and then decide it's the right time. Secondly, starting with no money is kind of normal. Actually, a lot of folks do that, including myself. But you are going to have to do the work yourself if that's the case. That means calling your own FISBOs, screening your own deals, and visiting the houses. Now, if you can get through that process, then you just got to get a contract on it, and selling the house is pretty simple. Now, we got a lot of lessons on the Go Club, and they're all cut into tiny modules, maybe 10, 15 minutes each. But gosh, I don't know if you're going to be able to start from scratch and get where you want to go just by watching those lessons, because you're going to have some, I think, some big missing pieces. Uh, frankly, there's so many lessons on there, I don't even know what's on there anymore. But I'll tell you, the first thing that I would try to do if I were you is to purchase my terms course. If you can just get my terms course purchased, that literally has step-by-step -step instructions on what you need to do with the forms and the agreements and the scripts and everything you need to do to get through that first deal. Of course, if we can get you through that first deal, I imagine the second one's going to be easier. But So back to the point, go find a way to create some revenue in your life while you are learning as much as you can about real estate. Don't sit back and wait to make your first deal solve all your problems. Okay. And the next three questions are from Ejaz from New Jersey. Hi. I am wholesaling a deal and the buyer wants to deposit the non-refundable deposit into their own title company's escrow. I don't feel com comfortable even though we will have the assignment if contract signed. If they don't close, they could choose not to pay me and the title company may not honor the contract of non-refundable deposit. I am trying to limit my expenses by not having my own attorney or title company. How should we protect ourselves or should I have my own attorney or title company? Well, honestly, on a wholesale deal, I, you, you can certainly get by without an attorney. Any title company can close the purchase. However, make sure the deposit that your buyer puts up goes into the title company that is going to do the closing. It's really not a good idea for that to be his title company, but honestly, I've done it multiple ways. If your buyer wants your deal, it's going to close. If he doesn't want your deal, it's not going to close, no matter who's holding the money. And if that deposit goes into that title company, they can't release it if your contract says it's non-refundable. They, if they have an escrow agreement, that'll spell that out. But if they don't, uh, they, you know, they are uh, bound not to release the deposit until you sign off on it. And of course, you're not going to sign off on it. Um, she also asked, the seller's attorney is saying he doesn't want to use our contract as there are too many changes they want to make. They drafted a new contract which doesn't say anything about limiting our rights to assigning the contract and asking for a huge deposit. I will be pushing back, but what is the best approach and how do we protect ourselves from these traps? If the contract doesn't say we can't assign the contract, can we assign the contract? You can assign any contract that, that doesn't say you can't assign the contract. So if it doesn't address the signability at all, you can assign it. If it specifically says you cannot assign it, you can't. If this is an all-cash purchase, many times, most of the time, my all-cash deals come through contracts written by or produced by either realtors or lenders or both. And if that's the case, because you didn't tell me, you're going to have to agree to whatever their contracts say because you're not going to get them to change them much. However, it's very simple. I don't care if it's one page long or ten pages long. It says you're buying it, you're paying cash, you're taking it as is, and they're not responsible for anything but giving you clear title. 
If that's what the contract says, that's all you needed to say. You pretty much ignore everything else. Now, as far as the largest deposit, you didn't tell me how large. Um, some of the Fannie Mae deals require a 10% deposit, so I would definitely not put that up unless you absolutely have visited the house and have done enough due diligence to know that you're going to close on it. Because if you don't, you're going to lose that 10% deposit. I think that answers those questions, doesn't it, Jenna? Yes. Okay. Okay, last question from her. I have a deal where the buyer is willing to do a lease purchase, mm -hmm. 175 with zero down, and 13.50 a month for three years. I hope you mean the seller is willing to do a lease purchase with zero down and 13.50 for three years. Yes. So okay. Buyer, but... Okay. The house is currently rented for 1,400, but could be rented for more around 1,600. All right. The concern is that since the lease just started, I will have to work with the current tenant to see if they are interested in buying, and if so, see how much down payment they might have. Two issues I see here are that the owners may not have a reasonable down and monthly spread is only $50 for the current term lease. Still 11 months left. What should I do? It depends. If your tenant that's in the house now has an option to buy it, you can't do anything because they already have a contract on it. You're done. If, however, they're just a tenant and they do not have an option to buy it, you can get a straight, uh, you can get an option to buy it, and you, or you can get a lease option to buy it, but if you get the lease option to buy it, you really need to have an attorney write it up because it must address the fact that everybody knows there's a tenant in there, and that tenant is paying bank number dollars per month, and that you've accepted the responsibility of that tenant. However, there should be a provision in there that says that your payment to the seller does not start till the third month after that tenant vacates the property. I would definitely put that in there. And now, after all of that is done, and then you have an agreement with the seller, now, of course, you can go approach the tenant. What's the worst that can happen? They sit in the house and pay payments for 11 months, and then you put somebody else in there. You've still got a positive cash flow. Uh, no harm done. Uh, that's the worst that can happen. And best can happen is uh, they move or they buy. And by the way, when I, if you get a property that comes with a tenant and they're going to stay in there and make uh, rental payments until some term or at the end of some lease, even if they don't have money to offer you for a non-refundable deposit, I would at the very least ask them if they'd like to have the option to buy during their term that they're in there, even if you don't get any money. And, of course, the condition is that they accept the responsibility for all of the repairs. That gets them off of your back. So I hope you, I hope that answer was clear. If it isn't, hit replay. <laughs> okay, the next question is from Walter Peterson in Cedar Falls, Iowa. Walter. Hey Ron, couple questions. With a land trust, can you use that to help get around the due on sale clause? Not exactly. Any due on sale clause says that if the uh, uh, controlling interest of the property is sold, then they can call the loan due. However, if you, you, you have every right to put the property in a land, the seller has every right to put the property in a land trust. The bank cannot call the loan due. It's prohibited by federal law for, uh, if they put the property into a trust for estate planning purposes. And then, of course, you can be the beneficial interest in it, and the thing is the bank doesn't find out that it's been transferred. That's the only value of doing it in a land trust. Uh, so, yes, they could call it due, but frankly, I would not worry about that if I were you. Uh, you're going to take title in a land trust anyway, so just go on and start making payments and do business as usual, and, 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 uh, you, and you should not have an issue. Also, if I want to borrow against that home, does the land trust complicate that? Absolutely. You'll have to take it out of the land trust and then go get a loan, guarantee the debt personally, violate my biggest, most deadliest rule in the process, and then when you close the loan, you can put it back into the land trust if you want. That is the last thing on earth I'd want you to do. In fact, I'd rather you not do the deal than what, you just, what I just described. Whose name does the insurance for the property need to be under if it's in a land trust? If you're using the company that we use, it doesn't make any difference. You can put it in any land trust or any entity you want. And uh, that is Chuck Jergens out of uh, Raleigh. He, I don't forget, remember who his underwriter is, N-R-E-I-G or something of that nature. If uh, you don't have that information uh, readily available on the Gold Club, then you can contact our office and get it. If it's not owner occupied, you guys, all of you, you, you want to call, you want to get a hold of Chuck. He'll cut your insurance premium in half, I'm telling you. 
in half. And also cuts your grief level in half. Okay, right. the last question is from Marvin in Texas. Hey, Marvin. Got a great owner finance deal. He only wants 5000 down and mm -hmm. it's worth 340000 That is good. I'm asking 320000 That is good. It's only been two days, but I have not had any calls. My only worry is that an agent tried to list for 330 mm -hmm. Then she brought the price to 298 Now that I got it under contract, I bumped up the price and Zillow shows that, but I'm offering terms. But I'm thinking that part might really screw me over. Well, I don't know, Marvin, because you haven't told me what you've done. I mean, it's it's uh, it's done, it's online, and people can go look it up. But that doesn't matter. You're offering terms, so you've been been at it a whole two days now. You should be discouraged because you should have had it sold by now, Marvin, or not. Tell us what you're doing. Make sure that you are doing everything you can to drive traffic to it, and give yourself a break, and don't expect miracles. Give it time. You got to first. You got to get the word out, and that means it's got to be on multiple, multiple sites. And um, is it occupied? You didn't tell me that because it's going to be a lot easier to sell if it's not occupied. Uh, I want street signs. I want pointer signs. Driving traffic to it. That'll get you more calls than everything else you do combined. And then you got to be able to show the house. So start with: Am I getting the calls? If not, what am I going to do to fix it? And crack that code first. And then when you start getting the calls, are you driving them into your IVR? Because you should be. If you got an if you got an interactive voice response system, let it take the calls, and then you call back the ones with money. You should not have any trouble at all getting a, a lease option tenant buyer for that house, beautiful house, beautiful neighborhood. But come on, man, two days, give me a break. Mm -hmm. All right, next. That's it. That's it. Okay, see you guys next week. Go do something productive.